Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and today we're going to learn about elements in compounds, and specifically when we put elements together to make compounds, how many of each type of elements are inside of that compound. Now I chose these pictures here just to remind us that when we see certain things in real life, often they are compounds and they're made up of separate different elements that have very different properties than the final compounds. For example, sodium metal, which is highly reactive, and chlorine gas, which is toxic. When those two combine together, we end up with table salt, which we eat every day. Similarly, if you take hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, you can end up with all of the building blocks of the human. We have our DNA, we have our protein, we have our lipids, and so on. So all of these things combine together, even though they have different properties, they make us. So we have one learning goal for today, to identify the number of atoms in a compound. So let's look at our first rule. Subscripts apply only to the preceding atom, and preceding means the atom that comes before the subscript. So let's take a look at an example here, C3H6O3. So this 3 only applies to the preceding atom. This 6 only applies to the H, this 3 only applies to the oxygen. So here we have carbon, there are three of them, hydrogen, there are six of them, and oxygen, there are three of them. Let's take a look at another example. Here this 3 applies only to the preceding H. Now here there's no subscript. The phosphorus doesn't have a subscript. When there is no subscript, that indicates one. So that's the rule, if there's no subscript, it means there's one. So that means there is one phosphorus, and then this four applies to the oxygen. So hydrogen equals three, phosphorus equals one, because there was no subscript, and oxygen equals four. So this is our first rule. Let's take a look at the second rule. Subscripts after brackets apply to everything that's within the brackets. So it's not just the one preceding atom, but it's everything in the brackets that precedes that subscript. So let's take a look at an example here. So we'll start off with the mg. There's no subscript here. So that no subscript means one, and it applies to the magnesium in front of it. Here we have a subscript two. It comes outside of the brackets, so it applies to everything inside of the brackets. So this two applies to the carbon, and it applies to the nitrogen. So we have magnesium, there's one of them, carbon, there are two, and nitrogen, there are also two. Let's take a look at another example. Again, aluminum doesn't have a subscript. We know that no subscript equals one, so that means there's one aluminum. This 3 comes outside of brackets, so it applies to everything inside the brackets. So there are 3 oxygens and 3 hydrogens. So for aluminum, there's 1, oxygen, there are 3, and hydrogen, there are 3. Let's take a look at our last rule. Subscripts inside of brackets are multiplied by subscripts outside of brackets. So, so far when we looked at subscripts outside of brackets, what was inside, there were no subscripts in there. Now we'll see what happens when there are subscripts inside and outside. So let's take a look at our first example. This two applies to the preceding atom, the aluminum. Here, this three that comes outside the brackets will apply to the oxygen and to the sulfur. Now sulfur doesn't have a subscript, that means there's only one, but that applies to the sulfur, and this four applies to the oxygen. So our aluminum has two, our sulfur had no subscript, so there's one, and we multiply that by the subscript outside of the brackets, which was three, so there are three in total. The oxygen had a subscript of four, and then outside the brackets there was the 3, so we multiply by the 3, which means there are 12 oxygen. Let's take a look at another example. Here our calcium has no subscript, so that means there's only one of the calcium. This 2 is going to apply to the hydrogen, and it's going to apply to the carbon, and it's going to apply to the oxygen. Since it's outside of the brackets, it applies to everything inside the brackets. 
The hydrogen doesn't have a subscript, so that means there's one. The carbon doesn't have a subscript, so that's one. And this oxygen has a three, so the three applies to the oxygen. So in total, our calcium, which had no subscript, has one. Our hydrogen, inside the brackets there was uh, no subscript, which means one. And then we multiply it by the two that was outside the brackets, so that gives us two in total. The carbon had no subscript inside the brackets, which means one. And we multiply it by the two that's outside the brackets, so one times two gives us two. And then the oxygen had a three inside the brackets, and we multiply it by the two that was outside the brackets, so three times two gives us six oxygen in total. So this is how we would solve these types of problems. So let's take another look at our learning goal. Can you identify the number of atoms in a compound? If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.